What's up, everyone? It's been a whirlwind of a couple months here. I'm actually planning to move to another state. A heart in the comments goes to the first person to guess where I'm moving to. But I have something that's relatively quick, and that is a review of the PinePhone keyboard. And we have this right here with the PinePhone in it. And I'm going to go over a basic overview of, of what the selling points are on this, and then also my thoughts on the device. The selling point is for all the Android users who miss having a keyboard that you can actually type with tactile feedback. It also comes with a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, which should expand your phone from 3,000 milliamp hours to 9,000. If they can ever get the battery life up to a full day on a 3,000 milliamp hour battery, then it should get users 24 hours of battery life under normal usage, which would be a, a pretty big win for the Pine project. As far as my thoughts on the device, uh, there are a couple things. Number one, it is really, really thick. You can see here the Pine phone. This case is actually thicker than the standard Pine phone, and then the battery pack in the bottom is even thicker than the phone itself. The keyboard is very large, and you can I have relatively large hands, and yes, while I can do thumb typing on it, normally I would be inclined to put my palms on both sides like that and actually type, and it's a bit of a stretch to get to the middle keys to do thumb typing. I think some of that space savings could come from making it a little bit thinner. If any of you have ever handled an LG NV, that would be a good example where Instead of having these long, deep presses on the keyboards, they could actually make it a little bit thinner. That would save a little bit of space for the thumb typing. And you also wouldn't have to press as far down on the keys. It's also a little bit, unfortunately, as large as it is, it's a little bit too small for full typing. When I put two fingers next to each other, it's just, I can do two keys, but when you get to three or four, you really can't fit your hands in there to do any kind of real typing or any kind of real productivity work. So it's a little too large for thumb typing, a little bit too small for full typing in general, which is not exactly what I was looking for in the device. I was thinking more like thumb typing, like my old LG NV, which I loved. It was the last phone I had before I entered the smartphone market. Another thing, the keys are a little bit inconsistent. Like if I, if I press the six here, it's very light. If I press the five, it's a little bit heavier. The four is heavier still. And then the three is light, as light as the six. Some of the keys are a little bit more sticky. It's just not consistent across the board. I do like that it's a little bit chunky. It feels like, you know, a 1990s retro computing device, but it's just relatively limited. Now with all that out of the way, the title of this video is going to give a spoiler. I think that this device is kind of a deal breaker with regards to its circuitry. It's no secret that Pine64's power management is terrible. And this battery in the PinePhone case is, I believe, completely shot after about five uses, five full discharges. I wanted to give this device a full review as far as like how it felt during daily usage and actual use, but I, I can't even do that because the battery is totally fried. And so it's been really difficult to motivate myself to do this video. Without power to the keyboard also, because in, in the PinePhone you can turn off the battery pack if you want to, but without the battery the keyboard doesn't work at all. So the device is bricked, it's totally unusable for me. The Pine phone has a well-known issue that when you try to charge it, it tries to boot up the phone. So if you use a low voltage charger, it doesn't work at all. So you need a high voltage charger and even then the charging is slow because it, it puts the phone into kind of a boot cycle and uses a lot of the power from the battery as it's charging. Once the phone's discharged, it takes a long time to get it to boot up again, even with a high voltage charger, just because of as lithium ion batteries discharge, their voltages drop. And so it just, it takes a lot 
even to get the standard batteries recharged. My best guess as to what happened to this battery, because I don't really know for sure, I don't know the engineering circuitry that's built into it, is that I had it on, which I did. I, I had the phone on for full discharges. As it drained the battery for the battery pack, it drained that battery and then it drained the phone battery. When the phone battery was fully discharged, it remained in charging mode and attempted to charge off this 6,000 milliamp hour battery that is in the thick part of this, the keyboard part, the backup battery. That battery had already been discharged, and so the phone continued to attempt to suck power from it until it went into, I believe it's called a deep discharge on lithium ion batteries. And deep discharges on lithium ion batteries are very, very bad. You need special equipment to revive them, even, and even then it's kind of iffy on whether or not you can bring a lithium ion battery back to life after it's been completely exhausted. This whole process, I think, completely fried it. And so we'll go in and I'm going to clear off a little bit of disk spa uh, desk space and open this phone up so that you can get a feel for what's inside the case. And then also, if you want to attempt a battery replacement, if, you, if they ever fix this particular issue and you have a fried case, that you can see what it's like to open up one of these cases. I actually broke a couple of the clips, so you will see that on the inside but seeing the anatomy of the case might help you out in the future if you're ever going to try and revive one of these items if you get your hands on one. All right, so we have the Pine Phone here. Please forgive if it goes a little bit out of focus. For some reason, OBS is giving me a hard time getting into the menu where I can set fixed focus and stop autofocus from doing its thing. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the phone from the case. There's a little pull tab here and you should be able to pull out around the edges until the phone is out of the case. Since I have a little seam here, I'll just pull unceremoniously. This is not the cleanest process. I do have in my Pine phone, I have a Samsung J7 battery. If I can get it to focus right. That's a little bit out of focus. This was the original battery right here. Something to be aware of if you go with the J7s, they are slightly taller than the Pine batteries, so they're, well, apparently really hard to get out, but there's also a little bit of a break in the plastic base on it. Here's a J7 battery that has never been in there before. You can see these little tabs in the bottom. Those make it slightly taller than the actual Pine battery. So while they will work, you will probably void your battery warranty, whatever that may be. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the case and try and open it. Hopefully I can get this open without breaking any more of the clips like I did the first time I opened it. All right, it's been a while since I've done this, so this is probably an off-camera type operation, and then I'll show you the anatomy once I get inside. All right, so now I remember what you're supposed to do. With these guitar pick things, there's little clasps, so you need to pull out once you get under to undo the little clasps. See, I'm getting in between them. I'll show you here in a second. All right, so those are off. So you see these little hooks. Focus. There we go. These hooks are grabbed from the outside of the case with these little plastic protrusions right here. So when you pull out, it will unhook these and you can get around the entire device.
Inside, you can see we have a 6,000 milliamp hour battery as expected. This is the circuitry. What I was kind of hoping would be in here is a pair of pine phone type batteries. I don't know, maybe angled this way or angled that way with some kind of circuitry to hold them together. Apparently this case, it, maybe it was originally designed that way and they just realized that this circuitry couldn't fit in here. But I was hoping it would be a little bit more modular in case something went wrong with this battery, like what I'm experiencing. That's basically it as, as far as tearing this down. I'm not sure about this EBITS chip, how that, how the voltage regulation actually works on it. But like I said, I think that this is fully discharging while attempting to charge the phone through the six pin connector right here on the back. If you have any questions, comments, if you think I'm an idiot or you think you know of a way for me to revive this battery, even though I'm pretty sure that it's shot, please let me know. I'm always happy to hear your comments. See you in the next one.